Hey what's going on guys Tanmay of Telusco Learnings and in this video tutorial we are going to take an introduction to the concept of objects in javascript so before even we get started with what are objects and why we need them let me put out this statement that javascript is an object oriented programming language yes it is not object based it is object oriented programming because it does support inheritance it has objects it has even classes now it has encapsulation abstraction and all those object oriented features but they are implemented slightly differently in javascript so if you are coming from c++ or java or those general purpose object oriented programming languages things are going to be little bit different but then the underlying concepts are going to be pretty much the same okay now coming to the concept of objects so before we get into objects let's take a scenario over here so as you can see on the screen i have three variables which have data about a particular car so we have car brand the car brand is tesla the car model is model 3 that's the name of the model and the price is 35000 usd that is us dollars so these are the three different things that we are storing for one particular car of a particular brand and then we also have a function which basically tells what the car is capable of so if this function is tesla autopilot which essentially means that this car has autopilot feature so this is a behavior right so car can drive car can have autopilot car can do reverse parking so on and so forth you know so that's kind of like a behavior of that car so things look pretty okay over here we've defined or we have data about the car in three different variables we have a function associated with that car but things get complicated when we actually want to have more than one car okay so let's say your program states that you need to have 10 different car models with all the data of car brand car model price and then corresponding different different behaviors of different cars so not all tesla models or not all cars will have autopilot feature right so the, even that will vary so this is where the problem arises are you going to copy paste this entire thing and just paste it again and then change the names so you'll have to do car brand 2 car model 2 change the brand name change the model name you also have to change the variable names and the function names so imagine you doing this for 10 different types of cars 10 different brands of cars and then it goes on and on right so this doesn't make sense this is definitely the most inefficient way to actually tackle this problem and what happens is in real world scenarios typically when you are storing data or when you are accessing some data it's not just one variable that you can put in all the data and that's because in real world scenarios the things that you are going to be storing data about have multiple attributes so let's say you are storing a data for a person you have his first name last name age gender salary and so on and so forth let's say you are storing data about fruits you know you have the type of fruit you have the name of the fruit you have the season in which the fruit grows if you are storing data about certain animals you have the features of that animals whether it's a cold blooded animal a warm blooded animal whether it's mammal whether it's reptile and then different categories right so this means that you are going to be accessing storing a lot of data about one particular thing so this is where the concept of objects come into picture because objects mimic the real world scenarios much better than these single variables so essentially what these objects help us do is to bundle these all these properties all these attributes about one particular entity let's say car for this example so you can put all these three things that is all these properties of a car under one single name and make it an object so how do you go about doing that so now let's see the syntax how to go ahead and create an object in javascript and things will get more and more clear as we go ahead in this series so there are few ways in which you can create objects in javascript i'm just going to show a couple of them which are most standard ones and most likely used So the first one is the literal way known as the literal object way. So you just type in var car equal to and now you just open and close curly braces. So this denotes that this car variable is actually an object, okay? Now inside this you define all the properties of the car that is what all data you want to store about it. So you can have car underscore brand colon and then the name of the brand. So I'm going to say Tesla. Give a comma over here if you want to have more properties but now you can see the variable inside this car object is being denoted a little bit differently so outside we were having a equal to sign inside we are having a colon and we are not having a semicolon at the end we are just having a comma because we want to add one more or more properties so we have car model i'm just going to copy and paste it over here again colon it's model 3 comma just going to copy this and instead of equal to it's going to be colon again and yeah these are the three things that is these are the three attributes or properties for the car so for this object car we have three different attributes that are associated with it now we can also have the functions inside this object and when we create a function inside the object it is basically called as a method 
So it is just the different naming convention. Essentially, it is a function only. But when a function is inside a class or an object, it is termed as a method. Okay. So that's the naming convention. So again, creating the method inside the car object, you can go ahead and say the name of the method colon. So it's a function, right? So you just have to say function opening and closing round brackets because it is a function opening and closing curly braces and it's showing an error because I forgot to add a comma over here and now the error will go and then just copy this and paste it inside. And yeah, you can see our object is completely ready. So what we basically did is we bundled all these things and coupled it inside one single variable name. And now this variable car is actually an object. So I can just cut this all out, cut this also. And now when I want to print out the car brand or car model, what I can do is in the document dot write method, I can say car dot car brand. So you can see Tesla got printed. So using the dot operator, I can associate the property of this object. So these three things are properties of this car object. And this is a method which is associated with this car object. So I can also call the method using the dot operator. So I can say Tesla autopilot opening and closing round brackets. And you can see this car has autopilot. Okay. So the reason why it was showing undefined is because it was not returning anything. Now what I did is I returned the string from this method. So when I call this method over here, just the string is printed. And even if I remove this h2 tags, it will still be inside h2 tags because I'm using h2 over here. And if I didn't return this, what I could have done is I could have directly said car dot Tesla autopilot and it would have done the same thing. Okay. Because I'm already printing the message over here. So I don't need to do document dot write over here. And if I'm doing document dot write over here, I can erase this and use a return statement and return this string itself. Okay, so yeah, this was about objects, but now you must be wondering, okay, so what if I want to create more cars, then again, I have to copy paste this entire code and change the things inside, right? So that's one and the same thing that was happening with the normal variables. So this is where the next type or the next way of creating objects comes into picture, wherein I can use something which is known as object constructors. So this is different if you're coming from any other object oriented programming language, because we are not using classes in this case. In the newer versions of JavaScript, direct classes is also supported. You can create a class and then create objects out of it. But we are not going to go that way. We're going to do it the old school way wherein we are going to be using the object constructor. So I'm just going to comment this all out. And now we're going to see another way in which you can go ahead and create multiple objects using one single template, which is known as function constructor or constructor function. So this constructor function is acting like a template, which will help us create more objects. So you have to write in function. So because it is a function, you have to type in function Then the name of the function. I'm going to say car or I'm going to say cars. Now inside the opening and closing round brackets, we're going to be passing all the parameters that we are going to be needing. So this is car brand. This is car model and this is going to be price. So these are placeholders or arguments you can say then opening and closing curly braces of the function. So that's the function body. Now here what I'm going to see is I'm going to see this dot car brand is equal to car underscore brand. So what I just did is when I'm going to create an object using this constructor function, I'm going to be passing certain values, right? So I'm going to pass the car brand name, car model and car price. So all these values are going to be on the RHS and this, this dot car brand is going to be the actual property of the object. So you'll understand that when we actually create the object, let me just first type it out. Okay. So I'm done with the properties. Now let's see one method that we have to also add inside this constructor function. So you can have a function inside this constructor function also using the this keyword again. So I'm going to say this and then I'm going to say dot and then the function name. So the function name or the method name was Tesla autopilot, right? I'm going to say equal to and it's a function, right? So I'm going to say function opening and closing round brackets of the function and again opening and closing curly braces for the function. And inside this again, the same thing, I'm just going to print it out and this completes our constructor function. Okay. So using this constructor function, we can create multiple objects of this car type. So this is sort of like a template, sort of like a class, what we do in C plus plus or Java. So now here, what I can do is I can say where C one that is car one is equal to, and using the new keyword, I can say cars. So here, what I'm doing is I'm calling this constructor function. And here, of course I have, I need to pass the values. So I'm going to say Tesla comma, model three 
and the price is going to be 3500 USD. Now, if I see C1 dot Tesla autopilot, you can see that we got the output, right? Similarly, I can also have one more object. Now I can say C2. It can be some other model. So I can say model P over here and the price is going to be different. Let's say it's 45,000. And now I can also print out C2 dot car model. And you can see immediately we got model P, which means that we created another object with different car name, but we created it in using one single line. So we didn't have to type all this again, or we didn't have to do this thing over and over again. So these are the two different ways in which we can go ahead and create object. I'm going to wrap this video over here. I know this is a lot as of now, as we move ahead, we'll probably see more things. We'll not be diving a lot into every object oriented feature of JavaScript because probably we won't be needing because in this series, mostly we're going to be concentrating on DOM manipulations and client side front end scripting. So not a lot of things regarding object oriented programming, especially the concepts are going to be needed. But yeah, an overall understanding of objects is definitely needed. So that's why this video and probably a couple of more videos will cover on objects and see, try to understand more about them. But for now, let's just wrap it over here. I know it's already a lot. So yeah, that's it for this video, guys. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Do share it with your friends. Let me know in the comments how this video was. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.